Hey everybody, so in this video we're going to be talking about future values some more and we're going to start off with talking about a sinking fund. So a sinking fund is saving, and the keyword of this is saving, money to pay off or buy something by periodically adding money into an account. So a sinking fund, essentially, instead of trying to just get a loan to pay for a car now and then having to pay off that loan, a sinking fund means you're going to save up for the car. The good part about a sinking fund is it means that as you're saving up for it, the interest you are actually earning, which means interest is working for you, it's adding money into your account. Whereas if you get a loan, interest is working against you. The interest is actually adding more money that you need to pay off. All right, so let's go ahead and look at example three. Brooke decided to start an account, a sinking fund, for her daughter's college education. She decides to put $175 into the account each month. The account pays 5.25% annual interest compounded quarterly. And go ahead and scratch out that word quarterly. That should have actually been monthly. That was just a typo on my part. These two should always match for this class. She started this account when her daughter turned one. How much will be in the account when she is 18 years old? All right, so we need those five same variables that we were getting last time. So starting off with n. So n is the number of times that it compounds. So since it's monthly, that means it's 12 per year. Times, how many years is this account open? Well, it's from when she turned one to when she's 18 years old. So if we just do 18 minus one, we'd see that it's open for 17 years. So it'd be 12 times 17. All right, and we can go ahead and just keep it as 12 times 17. We can actually just enter that straight into the calculator later and I'll show you how to do that. All right, next up, the I percent. So the I percent would be the 5.25 percent, so 5.25, divided by the number of times it compounds, which we knew was the 12. Next will be present value. That's always zero for these future value ones. And then payment. So we know that she's putting in $175. So we put negative 175. And lastly, future value is what we don't know. So that's what we're going to be solving for. So we're going to take all of this over to the calculator. So over at the calculator, we can go ahead and start putting in our stuff. Now, the reason that I said we don't have to actually multiply this stuff out is because we can actually go ahead and just put it in as 12 times, using an asterisk, 17. Press enter and it'll actually do that multiplication for you. That way you don't have to do it on your own paper and risk not plugging something in correctly. All right, next up is the I percentage. Now, for this one, this is going to be the biggest difference between you using a calculator at home and using this. So this website actually always rounds this I% percent to two decimal places. Now, unfortunately, that means it is going to make your answer off just a little bit, usually about a 0.3-ish percent error for your answer. So if you have a calculator, you definitely want to be using the calculator 
as it can hold a lot more decimal places and it can give you a much more accurate answer. That being said, we know that a bunch of you don't have calculators at home, and so if you don't have a calculator at home, this will do still and we'll understand if there's that little bit of error. So don't worry about it too much. All right, so I percent was our 5.25 divided by 12. Press enter, and again, 0.44 is rounded just a little bit, but I'll show you the difference between the two answers later. Present value is zero. The payment was negative 175. And the future value is what we don't know. So that's what we hit solve for. All right, so we're gonna take that answer, and don't forget there is a little bit more after the decimal place. And we're gonna go back to our notes with it. So back in our notes, I'm gonna go ahead and put up two answers. The website answer, which was 57,625.94, and also the calculator answer that you would have gotten. So for the calculator, you actually would have gotten 57,459.10. This is the more accurate answer. This is much closer to what you would actually be having in real life. This one does have a bit of a rounding error. As you can see, it's about 170 bucks in this case. Uh, however, that is a very small percentage overall. And so for the purposes of this course, we are okay with you turning in this answer as well. Just as long as you know, you should not go to the bank and tell them that that's how much should be in your account. There is a bit of error with it. All right, so moving on to example four. So example four, Caleb wants to start saving money for retirement when he is 40 years old. He begins depositing $500 a month into an account that pays 3.99% compounded monthly. All right, part A, how much will be in the account if he retires when he's 55? And part B, same thing, but when he's 65. All right, so let's go and get started on part A. So again, we just need those five things. So N is number of times it compounds. Again, this is monthly, which means 12, times how many years was it? Well, he's 55, or he wants to go until he's 55, and he's 40, so that's a difference of 15. So it would just be 12 times 15. All right, the I percentage, that's the interest rate, so 3.99 divided by the same number of compoundings per year, which was the 12. Present values always zero for these future value ones. The payments, he's paying in $500 a month, so negative 500. And future value is what we don't know. So let's go ahead and go over to the calculator. And here we can start plugging everything in. So our n was 12 times 15. Our i percent was 3.99 divided by 12. Our payment was negative 500, and we press solve for future value. Don't forget to look at the number after the decimal point. So back at the notes, again, I'm going to go ahead and give both answers. So the website gave us an answer of $122,643. And 70 cents. And if you used your calculator, 
then you would have gotten 122,000 nine hundred and forty four dollars and seventy cents all right so for part B now what is actually changing just the age that he's gonna be saving until so if only the number of years is going to be changing we don't have to redo all of this work the only thing that's changing is our n it's so the number of compounds times the number of years. Well, 65 minus 40 is now 25. That's the only thing that changes. All of this other stuff is going to be the exact same. So if we go back over to our calculator, then all we need to do is go up to N, and we're going to change only that. So our new n is 12 times 25. Hit enter, and then click solve for fv again. So the website gave us an answer of $255,583 and 57 cents and if you did it in a calculator you would have gotten two hundred and fifty six thousand six hundred and ninety three dollars and forty eight cents all right example five Tony Stark knows that some updates are going to be needed at Stark Industries in 10 years and estimates the cost to be $750 million. To have this money available, a sinking fund is established by making equal monthly payments into an account paying 6.2% compounded monthly. How much should each payment be? All right. So starting off with our n, it's the number of compounds, so monthly means 12, times the number of years, which it said it's going to be in 10 years, so times 10. Our i percent would be the 6.2 divided by number of compounds, which was 12. Present value is always zero for these. What about the payment? Well, in this case, we're looking for the payment. So that's what we don't know this time. We do actually know the future value. The future value is the $750 million. All right, because that's what we want at the end. So we can go put this in our calculator. So starting with n, it'd be 12 times 10. The i percent would be 6.2 divided by 12. The payment we don't know, so we're skipping over that. Future value will be seven hundred and fifty million dollars. And then we click solve for payment. All right, and again, make sure that if you need to, you go ahead and scroll through here because this one is a longer number, so it's hard to just see right away. So the website gave us four million five hundred and seventeen thousand two hundred and sixteen dollars and fifty four cents.
Oh, sorry about that. And on the calculator, the calculator gave us 4,527,063 and 56 cents. All right, on to example six. Brianna is saving to open her own business. She decides to make monthly deposits of $175 into an ordinary annuity. After eight years, the annuity was worth $25,000. What annual rate compounded monthly has this annuity earned during this eight year period? Give the answer as a percentage, correct to two decimal places. All right, so five things. Starting with the end, we know that it's compounded monthly. And so if it's compounded monthly, that means it's 12 times eight years. So eight. The high percent, well, that's what we don't know. It's some percentage, and we know over 12, but we don't know the percentage. So we'll come back to that later. Present value zero. The payment is negative 175. And the future value is the 25,000, because that's the amount that she ends with. So if we take all of that over into our calculator, we're going to have 12 times 8. I percent we don't know. The payment is negative 175. And the future value is 25,000. And we click solve for I percent. So 0 0.79. All right, back at our notes. We now know that I percent is 0 0.79. However, that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for the actual annual rate, which is this part up here. All right, so we know I percentage is the annual rate, which I'm gonna go ahead and call X because we're used to seeing X and not a question mark, over 12. And we know that that was 0.79. So I'm just taking this part, bringing it over here. Now if we just multiply both sides by 12, we'll get x equals 9.48%. And that's actually the same if you use the calculator or if you use the website. And that is it for future value.